Hi designers, welcome back for part two of how to create a deodorant mock-up. If you're just finding this video, go back to part one. That's where I show you how to make all of the files that we will be importing into Dimension. But if you're ready and you have your OBJ files handy, let's continue. So I've opened up a new Dimension file here. And the first thing I always do is click on this zoom, set it to 100, and you can see how small this um, canvas really is. So I always bring this up to at least 2000 pixels. I just kind of pick depending on what I feel like. And then the other thing that I love for really crispy, clear rendering is to increase the resolution to at least 300 DPI. Um, that way you're able to have really clean, really good renderings. So the more the resolution, the larger the canvas, the more time it takes, but it's up to you. If you want to spend, I mean, it maybe takes 15 minutes for a complicated rendering. It's not bad at all. Um, but if you have less time than that and you just want something in five minutes, you could do the default from Dimension. All right, now it's time to start dragging in our pieces and assembling our deodorant stick. So if I pull them up, where are they? Okay, now you can see I have my OBJ files, so I will just drag and drop them in to get started and start with the positioning. So I have the tube, I'm going to click this button that's arrow pointing at the ground, move to ground button, and I'm just gonna get the positioning right so I can save some camera bookmarks. That makes my life a lot easier to jump around to different views. So I'm thinking this will be good for deodorant in the center and I'm going to go to camera bookmarks and create one for the front and if you ever change them there's a spinning wheel you can always just replace over it you don't have to delete and create new ones okay and so after this I think I'll go for the tube inset we'll just keep building from the ground up and I rotate to 90 degrees and using our align tools, we'll just keep building and centering these objects along this axis, just repositioning things. And I can already see that I'm going to need to tweak that there's somewhat of a gap here. So I am going to click on the inset, click on this lock and bring it up to about 4.5 centimeters. And if I look at the render preview, I think that looks good. I'm going to take it to 4.4 centimeters. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm actually going to jump back into Illustrator. I don't make a habit of this, but I wanted to add a fill to this base so that there's no gap between this circular part um, and the pieces that stack inside. So I'm going to apply that to the insert and to the tub and re-export. My apologies. All right, so now I'm bringing in the tube, the new one that we just created, and bring it to the base, and then I'll also, what's happening? I tilted it too far. Okay, there we go. To the ground. And we'll go back to our front. And now I'll bring in the tube inset. All of these pieces, you can see that they settle in. So even if it is hollow, sometimes it's okay to have them be solid pieces that you can adjust and move around because dimension kind of blends and blurs those shapes together for you. And through materials and lighting can affect a lot. So um, don't be afraid to go back and tweak things if it's not working. Okay, so now that I have the inset, I'm going to move it up until it sits pretty flush, but still inset within the tube. Next, I'm going to bring in the lid gripper, which is my very technical term for the piece that keeps the lid from coming off. And as I go, each time I'm still going to use my align tools and get everything centered and centered. And then drag this up. And I think I need to make the size slightly bigger now, so I'll choose 4.4 centimeters. Let's look at a preview and see. There it is. I'm noticing that since these are white shapes, the light is really bright. So I'm actually gonna come down and adjust some lighting so I can get a better view. I'm gonna choose this low key studio lighting because it's just a vibe. It just gives me a little more muted tones so I can see some shadows. 
I'm going to come to the environment and bring the global intensity down to about 63. Let's see how this is looking. I'm also going to bring the shadow opacity to about 38. And I will rotate. Okay, so for this one, since I want to see the inside, I'm going to put the lid on the ground next to it, like that bottom example that we were working with. So each time, rotating around until it's the right placement. It's on the bottom. I also want to add that lid dot so it looks like it's coming from a plastic mold. Lid and lid dot, selecting both of those. Going center and center. All right, now I've got to move my lid dot up just slightly so that it pokes through, but it still looks like it's connected. So let me zoom in so I can get a closer look at it. Beautiful. And then the last part, oh, not the last part, but we also need to bring in the deodorant. And I'm just gonna get everything placed before I apply any of the materials. So I have the deodorant, I have the lid gripper, the inset and the tube. I'm going to select all of those come to the align and do center, center. And then I'm also gonna put these in a group because now we're getting a little crazy, right? We've got a lot of different layers we wanna to keep together. So same with the lid, um, just grouping those so that it's lid and tube and that'll help us keep things pretty clear. Um, I'm noticing some weirdness going. So sometimes going to object and generate UVs once you have something selected helps like smooth out shapes and and put those together. I don't know everything about it, but that's just been a hack. If something weird is happening with the graphics or with the materials, Generate UV usually helps. The last piece is the spinny wheel. So now that I have the tube and the spinny wheel selected, I'll do center and center. But I need to make that spinny wheel larger. So let's do that. I'm gonna click on the size, hit the lock, and then I'm gonna to come to 2.1 centimeters. Three centimeters. And yeah, there's our spinny wheel. It's looking so good. Okay, so going back to our camera bookmark to the front, I'm going to adjust a few things. So let me grab this lid. Oh, I gotta put the spinny wheel into the tube. And now with the lid, bring that to the ground and I'm gonna match up our example. So I'm gonna turn it at an angle just a little bit and reposition to the front and click my spinning wheel to reset that viewpoint. Um, maybe I'll have them overlap a little bit. I think I like this compositionally better where it's just slightly overlapping. Okay, update to the front. So now coming back to Illustrator, this is where you would add your graphics. So let me just create a label really quick. So once you have your PNGs exported of your different files, I'm gonna drag them here so you can see, but I just have PNGs because I still want the textures to show through. Before I add the graphics though, yeah, let's add, let's add these textures. I'm going to grab plastic and drag that onto this object. So I'm dragging plastic to all of the pieces that are plastic and then I'll also go through and change the color back to white because I do want it to be white white. When you choose plastic, it chooses like a really light gray. So be sure to check your base color when you're dragging in the materials. Okay, and then plastic for the lid, plastic for the little circle thing. And then for the deodorant, I'm going to try I think weave is going to be one of our better options. Let me add a light kind of yellow hue to it. I'm actually going to use one of my brand colors for the inside. So I'm going to copy and paste that hex value in. I'll bring the repeat up just a little bit. So let me see what this looks like from the front. I have that weave texture there. I'm going to do render preview. I'm really liking how that looks. So now I'm going to just drag and drop my PNGs and place them where I want them. And this is where the value comes in of creating your own mockups. Like now you can have so many different angles. You don't have to worry like, oh, am I finding the right like shape and um, creative market or whatever. It's like, no, you just create your own shapes that match what you want it to look like. So I just think it's a great way to 
um, represent your designs in the most easy, professional way possible. And so yeah, then once you get your graphics in place, come over to the render queue, you'll see your camera bookmarks are already saved, so I'll just click on the front and then select PSD so I can make a transparent background later on. Choose where you want to save it and then click render. And then you wait for the magic to happen. Go grab a coffee or something. <laughs> All right, designers, that wraps it up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Tell your other designer friends and spread the word that it is possible to make your own mock-ups using Adobe products. You don't have to learn anything crazy. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this content. Until next time.